Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of those gathered here be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There was a college student who recently called out someone in the class for prejudice. And the guilty party was himself. And he aired it all on his Twitter feed. Now, the, the lesson about the wrong, just how, how awful prejudice is, the, the ignorance of prejudice, that lesson alone would be a, a huge takeaway from this. But as you hear this, I, I want you to also listen for the topic that we're looking at, especially today, the topic of friendship. And we're going to connect to the, the key truth that we're looking at today, the kind of friend that we have in Jesus. So, Thomas McFall, dated April 9, 2018, wrote, Hey guys, I know I usually just post jokes on my Twitter, but bear with me because I wanted to share something. So, in one of my management classes, I sit in the same seat in the front every day. Every single day I sit there. Now, I also sit next to some foreign guy that barely speaks English. This guy also has a habit of stacking every item he owns in the exact space I sit. His bag, his food, his books, and his phone are always right on my desk space. Now, every single time I walk into class, this guy says, Ah, Tom, you here? Okay. And starts frantically clearing my desk of his belongings. He then makes it a habit to say, Ready for class? Yeah? and gives me a high five. Every day this guy gives me a high five. I, I was always annoyed with this guy. I'm thinking, dude, you know I sit in this seat every day. Why are you always stacking your stuff here? And the last thing I want to do is give a guy who barely speaks my language high fives at 8 in the morning. Just get your stuff off my desk. So self-absorbed? Yeah? We might use a description like um, egocentric. self Centered in thinking and in action. And also this, ethnocentric, right? Where someone thinks that the, the ways that people like them, the, the way that they speak, the way that their, their group acts, that's better than, than other people from other places. Let's go on with our lesson. Thomas McFall said, But today I came to class and was running a few minutes late. I'm standing outside because I have to send a quick text. I could see my usual space through the door. Of course, my desk was filled with his belongings, the usual. As I'm standing there on my phone, another guy who was also late walks into the class before me and tried to take my seat since it's closest to the door. The guy sitting next to me stops this dude from sitting down and says, I'm sorry, my good friend Thomas sits here. It was then I realized this guy wasn't putting stuff on my seat to annoy me. He was saving me the seat every morning. And this whole time, he saw me as a friend, but I was too busy thinking about myself to take him into consideration. I ended up going into class, and of course he cleared the seat and said, Ah, oh, Tom, you here, okay. And I did get a high five at the end of class. I ended up asking him if he wanted to get a bite to eat with me. We did. He moved here to pursue a college education in America. He plans to go back home after he gets his degree. He's got two kids and a wife. He works full time and sends all his leftover money back home to his wife. He said he misses his family, but it's exciting to be here. I bought lunch, of course. Dude deserves it. He gave me a high five. Got to keep up tradition. Moral of the story. Don't do what I do and constantly only think about yourself. It took me nearly the entire semester to realize this guy was just trying to be my friend. Better late than never, I suppose. Thomas McFall learned, learned a more important lesson than anything that was taught in his management class that day. Don't hold prejudice. Don't be prejudiced against someone just because they speak a different language, because they're from a, a different country, right? Now, I, I said we also want to pick up 
with our topic of friendship. And, and that's certainly in this account, right? The topic of friendship. Examine a little more closely the fabric of this account of, of Thomas and his friend. Do you see something unique about the friendship? A little different than normal? Tom's fellow student had been a friend to him, carrying out service to him, long, long before Tom understood it. And it was only when the actions of his fellow student opened his eyes, brought him to understand that, that he finally then, in return, showed friendship. A real, a real friendship was established both ways. Clearly you see that for a while the friendship was only only one-sided in nature. Usually we see friendship develop mutually, that, that both parties, they, they choose each other and they, they do something to, to establish that relationship with each other, but that wasn't the case in this example. Click for us again. Now you can have in front of you the, the text here. See the amazing quality of the friendship that we, Christians, enjoy with Jesus, our Savior, our Lord. It's a friendship that he explains to us, he established. It was all, it was all his doing. Jesus explains, I chose you. You did not choose me. Completely one-sided at its start, and, and completely originating, being formed and established by, by one person's efforts. That's the kind of friendship we have to be thankful to Jesus for. Jesus brings this out when he tells his disciples, I have made known to you what I am doing. Do you hear the connection between a knowledge of what Jesus does and the friendship we have with Jesus? He has made known to us what he is doing. He has opened our eyes to see the truth of his love. His actions and his words are what have brought us to understand, that, understand this. That is what has established our relationship, our connection to him. The account shared on Twitter with, with the friend who saved the seat, um, that was cool. And I don't, I don't know about you, but when I hear those, those real life stories with a, a positive outcome like that, I mean, it, it really gets me. Anybody else get moved by that? And yet, well, we can appreciate that kind of account and and the kind of friendship being shown to one who, who didn't see it until the actions of the other opened their eyes. Think how much grander and, and bigger in magnitude the love of Jesus and the friendship he has shown to us is. Jesus' love led him to lay down his life for us. He says that in our verses, right? Um, what's, what's a true friend? Verse 13. No one has greater love than this that someone lays down his life for his friends. What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. And it wasn't just physical death that he, he went through for us. Keep in mind, when he was on the cross, he suffered the curse of hell. He took our sin. He took our punishment in our place. He gives us his holy life and record through faith. That's the exchange that we have. Through faith in Jesus, we're washed clean, we have His holiness, and we have an eternity to enjoy with Him. What a friend! At this point then, when we have this faith, have a knowledge of what He's done to save us in our hearts, then, then we show love to Him. But it's all in return. It's all just in reply, in thanks in an expression of trust in the love that he's already shown to us and freely given. Remember the words of 1 John 4 we heard earlier. This is love, not that, not that we loved him, God, but that he loved us and gave his son as the atoning sacrifice for us. 
Since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Jesus says it like this in our verses here in John 14. Love one another as I have loved you. Continue to do the things I instruct you. Think closely about those, those words of Jesus, especially in light of the, the friendship quality that we're highlighting today. Love one another as I have loved you. Continue to do the things I instruct you. He is our friend. What an awesome assurance that brings us in the relationship that we enjoy with our God. He is our friend. And at the same time, He remains our Lord. And so, there's a different quality in this friendship than what's experienced in, in other friendships. Think about the normal friendship between two people. Those two people can accept as much as they want of what the other person is saying to them. Jesus is our friend, but he remains our Lord. How wrong for us when we approach his words as those of an equal that we could choose to, to take or to, to set aside. Jesus says, hold on to my commands. Continue to do the things I instruct you. Love one another as I have loved you. Now as we go at following his commands, think about how encouraging it is to know that the motivation for us to love others is this. Jesus loved us first. Jesus loved us first. And not in reply to some acts of love that he demanded from us first. Not only did Jesus love us first with that freely given love, he remains perfect in his love for us. While we are, are so often faithless, when we so often fail to show love to our greatest friend Jesus, he is unveiling in his love to us. We so often, we admit it, we, we so often fail to listen to him, our God, our Lord, fail to listen to his word. But how does Jesus reply? Jesus doesn't say, if you listen to me well enough, if you show love to me and to others well enough, then I will love you. No is our friend who already has loved us. He already has taken the full punishment for, for all of our sin. He has opened your eyes to know this truth. He has, he has opened your heart and brought you to believe in Him as your Savior from sin and giver of life eternal. You stand forgiven. If you're faith in Him, you're, you're forgiven. You're at peace with God. His love is His free gift to you and His mercies to you are new every morning to meet the need of each day for us as sinners. And it's that knowledge. It's that knowledge that moves us then to follow His command to love others. It's that knowledge that leads us to know that Whenever he wills something or tells us something, whenever he gives us a command, like love one another, it's for our good. He doesn't give us a, a command in order to, to stifle us and, and restrict us. He doesn't give us commands in order to, to keep us from fun and to keep happiness away from us. No, he, he gives us commands for our good. His love, the extent of his love 
proves that to us. We know everything he tells us is for our good. So think of it. As we show love to one another, like he commands, as we look for ways to, to serve one another as, as friends to other people that he's placed around us, we know that he is there to serve us. He is there to care for us. And if the need arises, he will provide some other person to care for us as well and befriend us in our need. That's the recipe that Jesus gives for true joy. You hear it? To know that anything he commands is for, it's for your good. And to know that in the midst of you carrying out his command to love others, he will care for you. That's how to have true peace and true joy. Got one encouragement I want to throw up to you that I read in the devotion on this section. Does the love he wants from us, a love so busy serving and so unconcerned about being served, require something of a miracle in us? <coughs> of course it does. And that miracle is found in focusing not on our love for him or even for one another, but first and always on his love for us. What a friend we have in Jesus. He has so loved us. He gives us the privilege to show the kind of love he gives us to one another. As I close up, I want to, want to highlight something I saw in a note this, this last week. I saw a note this last week. Some of you probably know this. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Anybody else see that? May's Mental Health Awareness Month. And maybe that's why there were so many headlines that were commenting. Have you seen some of these headlines? Where they're commenting about, in America, a study that came out recently shows that people are more lonely than ever before. They've been doing the same study, I guess, same questions for year after year. And now we're at an all-time high for people expressing that they are, are lonely. And the younger generation in there, from what I read, is affected in the, the greatest number. And you might kind of scratch your head and go, and maybe you've heard some of these, these kind of studies and comments too. Well, we're more connected than ever in some ways on, on social media and so forth. And you may have 500 friends, but, but some of those who have so many friends on social media have expressed it themselves. But if I truly have a need, if there's something I need to talk about with someone, some of them have said, I don't have one single friend to whom I can turn to for help, for encouragement. And whether it's, it's for that reason or for other reasons, there are obviously people, based on the study, that are feeling lonely and could use a friend and the kind of love that Jesus talks about in this section. So, so be that for one another. Be that for others in the world. Be that one that one friend. Be the one that just gives a smile to others. Be the one that, that helps them carry something if you see that, that they can't handle it. Open a, a door for somebody. If you, if you see they might need a word of encouragement, say something. It doesn't have to be big. Maybe ask out how, how they're doing. Say hello and, and give a smile. And you might say, but those sound like such small things, such small acts of love. But by doing those, you'll be showing to other people that you care, that you're a friend, that you've got this concern for them. And then maybe, just maybe, when they have a bigger problem, maybe you'll be the one that they can turn to. And you'll be the one that can point them to, to even bigger help as you let the, the love that Jesus gives to us shine through in your actions and in your your words to them. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.